What's going on everybody? This is your boy Alvin. I'm with my pops again. Of course, we're getting into some more wrestling reactions. And actually, this is Pat McAfee's top wrestlers of all time. So we're going to see how he ranks it, see who he likes, and see if it kind of compares to what we enjoy. Let's do our wrestlers though. Do, do, Philly, Foxy, you got it? Yep. Okay, I did this top because Gary V asked people to put out their top three wrestlers or something like that. Top which, three. by the way, I respect and appreciate Gary V's fan. Yo, let's take time real quick to appreciate, for me anyway, Pat McAfee and what he's been doing for the WWE when it comes to his announcing, him putting on great matches. Um, you know, you can tell he's a real fan, someone who just enjoys being there, enjoys the element. Shout out, shout out, shout out. He's like fantastic. I mean, JR was a beast. Taz, when he was, you know, commentator, he was a beast. Uh, you know, obviously Michael Cole, but Pat McAfee, I love as a commentator or play-by-play -play or whatever his title was. Manhood, you can't do top three wrestlers uh, of all time because there's different generations, different genres, you, uh, different eras. You literally cannot do that. So I put together mm, I my top three from different eras. With WrestleMania coming up this weekend, I couldn't see a better time to do this, actually. Let's start with the Golden Age, which is 1982 through 1993. Golden Age. My top three. I sure is. Obviously, <laughs> Andre the Giant. Mm -hmm. The Frenchman that used to be able to take down 50 beers be a night beer. if he wanted to. He was a spectacle. He sold out every arena. He so obviously Andre the Giant was before my time. Is like, do you have any like matches that you can recall that were like great that you've seen of Andre the Giant, or was that kind of when you weren't necessarily as into wrestling? Well, I mean, I wasn't really into wrestling. I was just watching it because it was on, but I really didn't, really wasn't watching it into it right then. So not too many iconic matches for you that or that you witnessed of Andre? No, that I can't think of. One and two. He was really the face of wrestling for a long time. Thanks. Come see this massive individual who can't fly on planes because it's four different seats he mm -hmm. takes up. When he sits in a car, the thing almost flips. Mm -hmm. Andre the Giant, by all accounts, was a gentleman of a soul while being a giant of a man. I say. wish I could have met him. Andre the Giant's number one. Then obviously you got to go Hulk Hogan. You know, Hulk Hogan obviously took his vitamins, ripped his shirt, did his entire thing. He was in movies. He beat up Rocky. He's done it all. Horrible movies, by the way. <laughs> Horrendous movies, by the way. Yo, Hulk Hogan, when it came to wrestling, I get it. He was great. Kids loved him, Hulkamania, woo, running wild, all this and all that and whatnot, but movies was trash. Actually, this might be blasphemous to some of you Hulk Hogan fans out there, but I'm not really a fan of Hulk Hogan. He doesn't do it for me. Doesn't do it for me at all. Hulk Hogan is a guy that's synonymous with the golden age of wrestling. And last but not least, hard times. Hard times. The American dream. Dusty, oh, Dusty Rhodes. Rhodes. Everybody on earth has tried to beat Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes was a massive part of the NXT in the Performance mm -hmm. Center and building up new superstars. Obviously, Dusty Rhodes' kid now. Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare, has started AEW, its own promotion that is doing very well. Oh, Those is, three oh, yeah. are my favorite from Two the Golden Age. Now let's move forward to the new generation. 1993 to 1997. My top three are Ric Flair, Woo! I can see that. You're talking to. Man, like Ric Flair? Yeah, I, I mean, I like him. I just saying he was okay. He was okay. I mean, he was just okay to me. I get it. I'm not I mean, Hey, you know, different strokes for different folks. The Rolex wearing, kiss stealing. We. Yo, can we also say that, please? Hopefully, that last match that he had was his last match because that was horrendous. I mean, bless his heart for getting out there being 70 years old, but if you see that match or even clips of that match, broke your heart. Broke your heart. Lord, stop. Stop while you're still able. Dealing, dealing, son of a gun. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a limousine ride and jet flying in there somewhere. I messed mm -hmm. that up. Promo in Atlanta from NWA to WCW to WWE. Ric Flair, who's still alive, by the way, very much still alive, still cutting promos, wearing Rolex, mm -hmm. is doing his thing. Ric Flair's number mm -hmm. one for me in the new generation. Then Macho Man Randy, Randy Savage, Savage is my number two. Step into a Slim Jim. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. 
coming off the top rope, obviously crashed the Jeep, ended up passing away. Very sad story. Right. His 30 for 30 in WWE documentary is a wild one. Macho Man Randy Savage had a hell of a run. Yo, you know he and Hulk Hogan really didn't like each other? Uh, there was a point, there was an interview of Macho Man. He was basically saying like, Hulk Hogan's a bum and that he wanted to fight Hulk Hogan in a boxing match, but do it for charity. And he's basically just wanting to fight Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. And you know, Hulk Hogan didn't respond or something like that. And yeah, like he, he was really like saying a lot of stuff about Hulk Hogan and how he just like destroyed, was like ruining the business behind the stage and stuff like that. So wouldn't, huh? wouldn't Hulk Hogan originally, originally the golden boy or something like that? Yeah, I mean, he was pretty much the like first, like John Cena, if you will. I mean, that was his name before. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Let us know. Before he came Hulk Hogan. Was he? Uh, the Golden Boy prior to? I believe that's what it was. Let us know in the comments. There. And then my third favorite in this era is Shawn Michaels, the heartbreak kid. Mr. WrestleMania is a guy Can't that just that. anytime he went out there, he put on an absolute show. I believe it is pretty well talked about that he was living a wild life at the time while doing this. Crazy. A part of the click, Shawn Michaels, it was an absolute legend, which leads into the Attitude Era. Attitude which is era. Where I can already tell you if he doesn't have the rock and stone cold in here, he's wrong. Mm -hmm. But I know he's gonna at least have stone cold. I think the WWF took off. This is when it became mainstream. This is when the entire world loved the WWF. This is the Monday Night Wars. This is whenever we were growing up when it was must-see television. And my top three are obviously number one. Stone Cold yes, Steve that's, that's Austin. I wear jorts because of the You know how um crazy it must have been for him that when he got stunned by Stone Cold at WrestleMania, like that for having like someone who's a wrestling fan and having like your favorite wrestler or one of your favorite wrestlers and you have that moment with him, that's probably something that he'll never ever 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 forget. The man makes Again. me feel good. He's his blue collar hero. He was once another character <laughs> stunning Steve. Whenever he found Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Texas rattlesnake, he started housing beers, stunner and everybody, mm -hmm. driving beer trucks, raising hell. Stone Cold Steve Austin was must see television. That's my number one. And without a uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, you obviously can't say that this guy wasn't potentially the greatest of all time. And that would be The Rock Dwayne okay. Johnson. He's smart. You He's might smart. know him now as the guy on Instagram putting up selfie videos and promoting all of his projects which are in abundance so you know him from his cheat meals his incredible mm -hmm. exercises all his clothing lines everything that he does the guy's gonna be a billionaire if he's not yet it. already mm -hmm. he's an absolute superstar when he was with the WWF he started it as this guy wore bright tights and he was in the nation of domination his dad was obviously a wrestler but whenever he became the rock and the millions oh. hey! Millions, millions of people were chanting Rocky's name. He had a, a, this ability to control the crowd. He was six foot five, athletic, obviously mm -hmm. attractive, could do everything in there. He and Stone Cold Steve Austin were a couple in a match made in heaven for WWF yes. that ran through things. And obviously, D Generation X, right alongside of that, in the. Oh, you copping out right now, Pat. Triple Coming H. Out genius of a man obviously this is supposed to be top wrestlers and he's gonna say top three you can't have top three but then have stone cold the rock and then five other people six other people come on now that's a cop out gotta choose one pat now it's playing this is your list you do what you want with your list but gotta choose one so let me ask you pat did five who would be your third from this particular era be john cena that that's afterward yeah, John Cena came in the ruthless aggression era. That's the yeah. next era. So you got you got uh, Val Venus, uh, 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 the whole train. Uh, oh. What's brother's name? Uh, Godfather. Uh, oh. Ken Shamrock, Undertaker, Mick Foley, or Mankind, Kane. Um, who else was back then? The Doug. Well, no, because he can't do that. Um, uh, so yeah, that that at that era, Gangrel. Young Edge, Young Christian, Ron Simmons, well, Farouk back then. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned um, Booker T in any of these things. Oh, uh, this is, there, he was in WCW. Oh. Actually, no, because he's just talking about wrestlers. No. You want to say Booker T? 
Booker go ahead, go for it. Booker T. He don't get enough love. Booker T. He says Booker T. I'm going with Undertaker. Because I love the Ministry of Darkness era. I love that whole, you know, the, the how crazy they went with it. So who put this squad together. They were this crew that was supposed to not listen to any rules. They were walking around telling everybody to suck it. China <laughs> was doing it. X-Pac, badass Billy Gunn, Road Dog, Jesse James, HBK, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H. It was musty television. They took a tank into a WCW venue. I mean, that's a moment <laughs> that we'll never, ever, ever forget. Then let's go to the Ruthless Aggression Era shortly after that, 2002-2008. John Cena, a lot yeah. of people say... Actually, I think this might just be uh, WWE now. I think about it. No, it might be just WWE, but we'll still give you Booker. We'll still give you Booker. He's the greatest wrestler of all time. Ty, would you agree? Uh, yeah, him or Chris Benoit. I'm a big Benoit guy. What can I say? Can you dump that? I, I don't think. You're Why can't right. you say that? I don't think you could say that. <laughs> I, I, I just Why don't. Not? I don't. Why not? I don't. Ty. Yeah, there was something that happened there towards the end. I, everybody's kind of conflicted. Or the artist. Except for respect. Two. Then evolution. Uh, the the faction evolution, which Triple H, Randy Orton, Batista, and Ric Flair, they carried a lot of stuff there. And then Kurt Angle, obviously, Kurt Angle, was yes. really coming into his prime. You know, dress up all the gimmicks Wrestling he was doing, machine. shooting star presses. Everything he did was just next His level. What's up, Brock Lesnar? You suck. You suck. You suck. And then he walk out and do this. <laughs> People <change. laughs> We saw Kurt Angle on a oh. flight sitting right next to us. He has mastered the ability right to pass here. out on a real plane. Happy. Guy got 45 neck surgeries, is still a legend, still an OG. And he won a gold medal with a broken, broken freaking neck. Yeah. Let's move forward to the modern era, which is 2008 to the present, which is the biggest era, by the way, that's just 12 years. Randy Orton has been an absolute showstopper. He goes mm -hmm. from evolution to being his own guy. Randy Orton might be my favorite heel. You know, actually, he might, he might be in my top five favorite wrestlers. Favorite wrestlers, not who I think are the greatest, but favorite wrestlers. I love Randy Orton because he can do everything so effortlessly. Effortlessly. Mm -hmm. He's attractive. He can do everything. And he's actually hilarious of a human. A lot of people talk about if he tried his hardest, he would be the greatest superstar of all time. I am a big Randy Orton fan. Mm -hmm. And obviously Brock Lesnar comes immediately after. Both those guys are from OVW, by the way, down in Louisville. Rip Rogers coached both of them. Brock Lesnar, still the absolute man. Still can do whatever. And he went over to the UFC and just beat the hell out of everybody over there with his big ass Manitoba mitts. <laughs> and then he got Cody Rhodes, who I believe is one of the greatest of this era because he created his own promotion and has made a bunch okay, so of money. I understand that the Young Jacks and all that stuff are a part of that and everything like that. But Cody Rhodes has taken on this spectacle in of itself that I think anybody would be proud of, especially if he comes to Rhodes. In all time now, my top three wrestlers of all time. Number one, uh, no particular order. Brock Lesnar. Okay. Just believable, has been mm -hmm. doing it for so yeah. long. He and Paul Heyman, incredible. Not in mind, but I get it. If you like Brock Lesnar, for the fact that he's real, the fact that he's believable, the fact that he just dominates. His rookie year was probably the best rookie year of all time. You know, you can't be mad at Duo. When the maestro of the microphone, Paul Heyman, starts speaking and waddling around and Brock Lesnar comes out, as soon as that music hits, you have no clue what's mm -hmm. going to happen, but you're glued to the television, which is all that matters. John awesome. Cena is uh, number two on my list. One thing I will always ride for John Cena with, um, again, he's not necessarily one of my favorite wrestlers, but I'll always say he might be my Mount Rushmore uh, just because, again, because I can get, differentiate my favorite and who I think is the best. Um, for example, Bobby Lashley is one of my favorites, but obviously I don't think he's one of the greatest of all time. But John Cena carried the company for so long. So what if he, you know, did a whole bunch of things with kids and yeah, because kids love him, yeah, yeah, yeah. He carried the company for so long. So many great promos he had. John Cena, big match John, had some great matches as well. It's not like he was a slouch in that area. He checked all the boxes. So I get that. I get that. So the greatest of all time. And then obviously number three, Triple H. The guy has been there, done that through every single era, basically, and has been a massive mind behind it all. I'm happy for all these wrestlers. Can't wait for WrestleMania. His, his I dope, thank sir. them all for their time in I the ring and on a microphone and on the road for entertaining us all. Good luck. Hope it gets back to 
an attitude era like style the pg era made a lot of money obviously they were able to market towards kids so a lot of right merch now. as you're looking at a child here wearing some i mean it's just kind of the way it has gone we all hope it gets back to a pg-13 era soon because in our stage we feel as if we would enjoy that most but wwe is an international billion dollar so that was pat mcafee's greatest grocers of all time uh, i'm not mad at his list at all uh, I agree with a lot of the things he put on his list and his like reasoning behind it, even though uh, his top three isn't someone other than John Cena who I put in my greatest of all time. Uh, I get it. I understand it. You know, it wasn't just because like, oh man, he's cool or yeah, he actually had like real points behind it. So uh, other than that, how did you feel about his list and, you know, some of the people he had on there? It was okay, but I just had to add, uh, do a little bit different. Mm. What's one person that you would have added to either era, either era of the list? Either era. I think I'd have had Undertaker on there. Undertaker. I'm not mad at that. If y'all don't know, Undertaker is my number one go. Number one go. So, that being said, thank you guys for watching up until this point. Comment some more wrestling videos down that you guys would like to see us react to. We'll catch you guys next time. Deuces.